afternoon, everybody. Everybody, to please silence your cell phones would be greatly appreciated. So, the microphone that I'm using actually speaks to the other wonderful trilogy locations that are joining us today. And so, if you cannot hear me, please let me know. We'll, I'll do what I can. <laughs> Yes, it, it doesn't sound the same in here, but it does for the other locations. So that's why it's a little bit unique. So I'm Kyle Johnson. For those of you who haven't met me, welcome everybody. Um, today is going to be another fabulous presentation by my friend Rosie. Um, I would like to ask if there's anybody here that hasn't joined us in the past. Welcome, welcome. <gasps> yes. Thank you very much. We hope you come again. We meet uh, Mondays at 4 p.m., the uh, second Monday of the month. Rosie will be back with us um, month after next. We'll talk about that later. Anybody have any questions yet? <gasps> yeah. All right. Let me introduce wonderful, wonderful Rosie. Not that she's my friend or anything. <laughs> so, oh yes, excuse me, I must wear my glasses. So, Rosie Bank is a board certified integrative nutrition health coach. She's been helping people live more successfully in their bodies since the mid-1970s. She's a graduate of the Rolf Institute, the Einiger, I, I, Nangar, I never say it right, Yoga Institute, and the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. She is the former, excuse me, she is the founder of Health Matters Coaching and the author of four books, most recently, Health Matters, 52 Ways to Get Your Body to Love You Back. I'm actually um, not even at 50 yet. I'm about at 10, Rosie, right? Um, uh, for over 30 years, Rosie practiced rofing and taught yoga, body therapy, and movement therapy. Since 1999, her specialty has been nutrition. She helps individuals and groups heal their bodies and find balance in their lives through a variety of wellness practices. She and her husband, Mark, who's in the back, enjoy a sporty life here at Trilogy. New to veganism, Rosie loves to experiment with new dishes that are nutritious and delicious. Rosie recently started the Vitality Club here at Trilogy, which is open to new members. She is an avid practitioner of yoga and meditation and believes that she is on this earth to inspire others to make it a pri priority to take good care of their bodies. And I can tell you from my experience with Rosie that not only is she a fabulous speaker, a fabulous health coach, she is a fabulous cook and a fabulous person. Rosie. <laughs> and it's Bank, Rosie Bank without the S. Thank you, Diane. Thank you very much, Diane. <laughs> what a good-looking good group. We're going to start off with a survey and raise your hand if you can't hear me. Good. You can't hear me? All right. I'll, how about now? Testing, testing. Okay. All right. We're going to take a survey. We're going to start off. I'm going to go from zero to 100. And I hope, you'll, I hope you'll participate because you need to help me make a point, or I need you to help me make a point. The first question is, how many of you prepare meals at home? Never. Hardly, we could do hardly ever next, okay? How many of you prepare meals at home never? How many of you aren't being honest? <laughs> How many of you prepare meals about 10% or hardly ever? I appreciate that. All right, sliding up the scale. How many of you prepare meals at home about 25% of the time? Maybe, what's that, about once a week-ish? 
Okay. How many of you prepare meals at home about half the time? Half the time go out, half the time stay in. Okay, close enough. How many of you prepare meals at home almost always? There we go. How many of you never eat? <laughs> okay. Here's what we're going to do until about, oh, there's no clock here. Will you give me a time about, let me know it's about 10 of 5, okay? So here's what we're going to do over the next hour. We will definitely end by 5.15 at the latest, and maybe we'll end by 5, depending on how this goes. But I am going to do my very best to inspire you to make eating and nutrition a priority and I hope to inspire you with reasons that it doesn't matter that the reasons are compelling to me. It matters that the reasons are compelling to you. And some of you may know that what I did to get ready to be with you this evening, this afternoon, is way back in the past. I was 36 pounds heavier, and I had a whole bunch of illnesses and diseases. And I don't have any of those anymore. And a big part of how I got myself well was using the food that I'm going to talk about with you Today, there's a section around 15 minutes before we're done where I'll ask your, for your comments and questions, and please hold them till then if you want to write them down. I promise to get back to you. All right, a couple of uh, housekeeping. There's a special URL, rosiebank.com slash trilogy, and I'm going to tell you before we're done today what you will find there and that will happen shortly into the program tonight, today. Is this today or tonight? This is today. Uh, whoopsie. Technical support on the slides, please. All right, I'll look back up here. All right. The first step that I propose for us to get on track is to encourage you to get the junk out of your house. This is an astonishing fact. If it's not in your house, you won't eat it when you're home. So we're going, to talk, we're going to talk about upgrading your choices and an exa some things that we're going to talk about to get out of your kitchen are junk food and sugary foods. We're, I'm going to talk about a low glycemic approach to eating. I'm going to talk about a balanced meal. And I have some of what I would call takeaways for you that I hope inspire you. And one of them is to move the needle toward putting in time and effort to preparing food that's nutritious and delicious and convenient and easy at home is to learn about new ingredients. This time last year, I did not know about the savory blend from Dr. Michael Grieger. I wasn't cooking with tempeh this time last year. And other things that I will share with you. Oh, here's one funny story. When I was in college, my roommate came out with a fruit salad. And I said, oh, my God, how did you make that? And that was a long time ago. And for those of you, as a, for a show of hands, how many of you are here because you think, it would be okay, I wouldn't mind learning to make new, I wouldn't mind learning to prepare new foods and explore new ingredients. Fabulous. There we go. We are alive and together. All right. So we talked about new ingredients. We talked about eliminating some of the junk. I have a list for you of things I recommend that don't live in your kitchen pantry or fridge. The next one is, I like this talk, I like this turn of phrase called move the needle. It's, you don't have to be perfect to make good food. You also don't have to take notes unless you want to because this entire slide deck is already loaded up for you at rosiebank.com slash trilogy. And if I forgot to, it will be by the time the day is over. Okay. So un it, it's unrealistic that you're going to become a gourmet chef overnight. I became a gourmet chef. May I call myself a gourmet chef? I can call myself whatever I want. I'm going to call myself a gourmet chef. It happened gradually. Some of the things that I made in the past were inedible. Some of the things got thrown out, and I don't know when the last, oh, I, the, last week I made, I was in Baltimore last week, and I had this delicious rice pudding. So I went online, I looked up vegan rice pudding, and I made rice pudding, and it was pretty just okay. 
so I'll make it again until I get it to be better. So experimenting with food is a wonderful thing. And if you use fresh ingredients, it's very unlikely that you'll make something that's not edible. But if you do, so what? It's worth it to begin incorporating new fabulous dishes into your repertoire. The other thing about making food is simple, delicious, and nutritious. It's not that easy to put them all together. I bet we could all easily do simple and or nutritious and or delicious. But one of my main goals tonight is to send you home with a mindset that they can be put together. All right. The next one, food that makes you feel and look fabulous. I call it a wow experience. And I'm going to talk about some foods that maybe some of you eat. Please don't take it personally. I'm just using these as an example. I, it's not my intention to disparage your food choices, but I do need to make an illustration. So let's say a person has a gigantic meal of barbecued ribs. I'll use that as an example. Very little green vegetables and lots of wine. It's okay. It's okay, except that one might feel like... I have to say the crap word and get it, get it out of the, get it out. Feel like crap, all right? Food like that, it will not give you a, oh my God, I'm so full of vitality experience. It, it's not, it, and I'll explain to you today why it's missing the ingredients to help you feel absolutely fabulous. The food that I'm going to talk about today is biochemically engineered with information to give your cells a wow experience for you to say, oh my God, I have so much energy, I feel so fantastic, I'm so comfortably satisfied, as opposed to eating too much of the wrong kinds of foods that, makes, that can make you feel knocked out, full of regret, and rendered sometimes incapacitated. I've had that experience, so I have compassion. If you do that, if you used to do that, if you know somebody who did that, no judgment on my part, been there, done that, and one of the reasons why I have no risk to doing that again is because I got hooked on feeling fabulous from eating food that's nutritious, delicious, and easy to prepare. And I'm passing that on to you. Then we're going to talk about the mindset. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but if any of you ever consider that it takes too much time to make healthy food, food that gives your cells a wow experience, food that helps you steer clear of diabetes and heart disease, don't raise your hand, that's personal, but I recommend that you consider doing a mindset adjustment. Because if you're having somebody else cook for you all the time, and you don't know the ingredients, and you're eating too many sugars and too many processed oils and too many saturated fats, because you, quote, don't have time to prepare food, it might be a tremendous mistake by letting somebody else, who you might not even know, feed you. And the most dire consequence of that decision could be premature disease that is absolutely positively correlated with food. Food is either, to use two extremes, poison or medicine to heal you. And I'm sure that we're all somewhere along that spectrum, but in terms of moving the needle, let's get, let's, inspire you to move from the most of your food, not your food, most of someone's food, one's food, is not good to move the needle, not being perfect, but to move toward whole plant-based foods. And also, because we have this Vitality Club, who I am is not someone to say you can't drink, can't drink wine, can't eat me. It's not that. It's just trending toward more nutritious food because we're a trilogy. We all want to play pickleball until we're... 105, or something analogous to that. All right, and the next one, can't see the slide? All right, here we go. So I want to help you begin the on-ramp to simple and nutritious and delicious. And one of the ways I'm going to do that for you is I made a document called 10, 10, 10, 10 meals for $10, under $10, for two people in under 10 minutes. Sound, who would like that? <laughs> Rosiebank.com slash trill, you're, you're catching on, okay. I'm going to go over those dishes with you today, but in the document that I created, that's really, uh, I have a lot more data with instructions, not instruct, instructions, suggestions for ingredients, all right? Simple, that means it's not overwhelming to make, 
except for the caveat that I suggested you'll probably need to learn some new ingredients. For example, with a show of hands, who among you is comfortable cooking with tofu? Tofu, okay? And some of you are curling your lip. All right, How, who among you uses fresh herbs? Fresh herbs, okay. All right, how about uh, coconut oil as an example? Okay, nuts and seeds. Okay, the point is when I show you some of the foods that I recommend, and by the way, sidebar, there's so many foods, I can look at you and I say, there's so many foods that are delicious, nutritious, and easy. Delicious, nutritious, easy, okay. So we did easy, not overwhelming, not so many esoteric ingredients, except that I encourage you to learn some new ingredients. That was simple, nutritious, whole foods, mostly plant-based, moving the needle, toward more fruits and veggies. I'm going to explain to you the information they contain that gives your cells the wow experience and delicious. So the, in, my, in my hard-earned opinion, because I used to be a junk food junkie and I used to eat the worst food, you can copious amounts of the worst food imaginable, at which point I had bleeding gums and an eating disorder and kidney disease and my, uh, what else, my joints ached. And most importantly, I could hardly get out of my chair because my energy was down toward the ground. I knew nothing about nutrition. This was in my 20s and 30s. I knew nothing about nutrition. And it's hard to imagine now that I did not know why my energy would disappear. I know it now, and I teach classes on the glycemic index. We can talk about that today. But I'm here to tell you that when you go toward delicious and you include whole foods, you will feel that much better. And I think a good takeaway from tonight is that you, you're not reliant on food that makes you feel crappy that you think is delicious. I mean, I think it's great to move the needle to food that makes you feel great and is delicious. I mean, that's like, that's like a gimme. All right, here we go. Now, wait. Okay. I'm not saying, I'm not saying never eat these foods. And I'm not here to be in judgment if you do eat some of these foods. But in fairness to you and true to my message tonight, these are foods that I recommend you have eat somewhere between never or rarely or as an exception. The easiest thing to do with this list is to look at these foods and realize they should not occupy the totality of your plate. For example, I had a client who gave up diet soda. That's all she did. We wanted to do an experiment. We, I, I asked her what I often ask my clients, what's the, what's, give me a high mileage adjustment. The thing that you do or if you don't do will give you the most bang for your buck. And she said, I have 12 diet sodas a day. So that's what we started with, 12 diet sodas a day. We switched her to water. She lost 12 pounds. She was in a better mood. She wanted to have sex with her husband. And she was nicer and happier. So if you were to ask my professional opinion, I personally think that artificial sweeteners should not pass our lips. You may not agree with me. You may not choose to practice that. But that's an example of a food that has information that compromises the function of your cells versus, let's say, a date, one organic date that they sell at Sprouts is a whole food that's delicious that has vitamins and minerals in it. So that's an example of a food that can go off your plate. I'm going to talk more about dried fruit in a minute. So the white bread, sugar, rice, tortillas, bagels, those are all examples of high glycemic food. You all know what high glycemic food is? Causes a spike to your blood glucose. When I took my training at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, one of my professors said, if there was one thing we should teach all of our patients and all of our clients, if there was just one thing, which it's never one thing, but if there was just one thing, it would be to get your blood glucose levels even. Because when your blood, when your blood glucose levels are even, as opposed to dipping down precipitously or spiking up, you are now veering away from heart disease and diabetes as opposed to veering toward. Plus, when your blood glucose levels are even, you'll have so much energy you won't know what to do with yourself as opposed to something that perhaps some of you can relate to is spikes and drops in your energy during the day. 
Anybody can relate to that? Okay, that's a really awesome thing to fix. And it's very, very fixable, okay? All right, on this list, I think this list speaks for itself. I'll make a global comment about this list, which is, I don't know about you, but I consider my assets hard-earned. You know, my husband and I have saved money, and I still work hard, and so there's that whole financial piece. I remember saying to my kids when they were little, I love you too much, and I'm not willing to take my hard-earned assets to buy junk food. It's a very poor investment, especially, and by the way, the studies have been done, if you eat a plant-based diet and you eat organic food and you're not spending money on meats and fish and things like that, it does not cost more. I'll be the first to admit that takes training. If you were to begin to assess the cost of having a healthier diet, it might seem overwhelming at first, but it's very learnable. It's, 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 you, know, you know what's the, the underpinning of learning this stuff is having a motivation to do it. I'm sure if you're living here or visiting here at Trilogy, I'm sure, I'm sure most of us are educated and this is not your first rodeo in terms of learning new things. When you're, highly, when you're motivated enough to veer toward longevity, to veer away from heart disease and diabetes, I promise you, you will save so much money because one of the most expensive things in the world is to get sick. They call it medical bankruptcy at a study in Harvard. All right. But now, ta-da, look at these beautiful foods. Look at these beautiful foods. I had, to, I had to use a smaller font to get all of my beautiful food on this list. I'm going to show you tonight how to put these together in ways that are so simple, I really think you'll be pleased. And when you have these kinds of food in your pantry, a couple of things about this. You will not be at risk to having cereal for dinner. You will not be at risk to having, oh, let's see, popcorn for dinner. And when you take the time, and that's why I suggested the mindset around time, when you learn to prepare food like this, assembling sometimes, not even cooking, just assembling. I'm going to show you some foods to assemble, which take no time at all. I forgot the, that was such a long sentence, I forgot the beginning of it. <laughs> but I do remember someone in a lecture that I gave one time, he said, he stood up, he had, like a, he had a eureka moment. He said, oh my God. I've been taking my kids to McDonald's because I thought I didn't have time to prepare dinner. And by the time we get there and traffic and waiting in line takes so much more time than putting together some of the simple, delicious, nutritious meals I'm going to show you today. All right, I'm going to go through all of these, so let's jump into it. All right, I'm going to do a few slides of the top. You can see the little X over it. This is a picture of snacks. And the, if you've ever had veggies and hummus, it's absolutely delicious. The top slide is an image, because the picture says a thousand words, right? The top slide is, I hope for you, a picture of what not, this is like, you know, the what not to dress show. This is the what not to eat show. And if you don't have it in your house, you won't eat it. All right, these are going to be really simple. Veggies and hummus, by the way, let's talk, remember I said to you, we, I was going to tell you about the, the biochemical information in fruits and veggies, antioxidants, phytonutrients, vitamins, minerals, these are all the building blocks to your cells. The junk food has in it processed, processed sugar, high fats, often saturated fats. That list will cause inflammation in your cells, a spike in your blood glucose, and they'll make you, it'll make you fat if you eat too many of them. The really amazing thing about the veggies and hummus is most people don't tend to overeat the kind of food I'm going to show you today because you're feeding a different part of you, of yourself, of your being, of your body with whole food than you are in the, in the junk food or low food category side of the equation. I'm going to repeat that because that's, that's a pretty important takeaway. When you eat whole fresh food that you have lovingly prepared, You've taken the time to chop it up, and you eat in a mindful way, and you are connected with this process called nurturing and nourishing your body. 
That is a completely different mindset. It's a completely different mentality than binge snacking or eating or using sugar to overcome a dip to your blood sugar or using food to overcome fatigue. And that mindset is critical to crossing over to using food to promote wellness. I could go on and on on that one. All right, the next one. If you want pasta, I love pasta, I love pasta. Well, you can easily go from white pasta with cream sauce. I have a couple of uh, brands here, and my favorite is what I call a one-ingredient pasta. Black bean, mung bean, azuki bean, soy bean. One-ingredient pasta cooks like regular pasta and is nutrient-dense. It has the, the good information for your cells biochemically as opposed to nutrient-dense versus empty calories, which is the one that I said is not a very good deal. Oh, this particular one, by the way, this is a mung bean pasta. It looks like carrots and bell peppers and some chopped broccoli. Broccoli is really good. It's a cruciferous vegetable. Cruciferous vegetables are really good for fighting. Yes, sir. There you go. You're cooking for me next week. That's right. All righty then. Okay, diet soda versus lemon water. Yeah, bubbly water with lemon is so refreshing. So, so refreshing. It's going to make you feel fabulous. Soda spikes your blood sugar. Diet soda and artificial sweeteners correlated with brain cancer. Ooh. Can't go wrong with bubbly water. Thank you. Can't go wrong with bubbly water and lemon. As a matter of fact, these, this, this series of slides is for replacements. So a Starbucks coffee, four, let's see, 150 calories, 490 calories. And th those suckers are expensive, too. In fact, I see the kids, I see that we, where we used to live, we used to live coming home, we'd pass us. Remember schools in the neighborhoods that in the past, in the olden days? Well, we don't see schools around anymore, but the kids now, there's a trend to having Starbucks after a school. They are so expensive and before school, right? Not a good habit. So the green drink is bound to give you a big wow, a really big wow, loaded with that information to turn your cells on, to increase your life force, to give you more chi or prana. Actually, the green food actually helps oxygenate your cells, and that is part of the, that's part of the, chem, the biochemistry of your vitality. Vitality is not just a random thing. It's actually an experience in your body when you've turned your cells on with good nutrition and, and oxygen, not oxidized, by the way. That's the thing you don't want in your cells, but oxygenating your body is a really wonderful thing. Remember, this slide deck is available at rosiebank.com slash. Oh, you guys are great. All right. So here's one. So here's what I don't mean by eat your veggies. A wedge of iceberg lettuce with a pound of blue cheese on it. <laughs> Sorry, that's not what we're talking about. All right, here's a picture of more cruciferous vegetables loaded with sulforaphanes, anti-cancer, fighting cancer. Just as delicious. Now, I do confess that some food that some people prefer heavy sauces, lots of fat. There is a mouthfeel to fat. It's a, it's, it's a, it increases satiety if that's what you're used to. And if you do want to make a note of your takeaways for today, one of your takeaways is to enjoy the crunch and the flavor and the savoriness, maybe with some garden herbs, to vegetables, and quite frankly, weaning off those saturated fats comes to a point where we don't eat them anymore, and if we did, well, let's just say weaning yourselves off from saturated fats. Okay, I loved doing this for you. So I've tried to pick a really good, popular brand of veggies. I think Green Giant says it all. If, I recommend having in your freezer 
a, back, a backstash of we keep organic frozen berries. We get these delicious organic, I'll stop saying organic, it's all organic. English peas from Trader Joe's, riced broccoli, fr it's riced broccoli, which is the only ingredient is broccoli from Sprout. They don't have it at Trader Joe's. What I don't recommend is mistaking these ingredients for your daily amount of veggies. If you are not an ingredient reader, I recommend that you become one. And if you are an ingredient reader, I recommend that you continue. This is what I'm talking about. One ingredient. Can't go wrong. So simple. All right, now this is the fun part. Burgers are your friends. Th these are the burgers that I've tried and that I like. These are veggie burgers. When I went online to get pictures for you of veggie burgers, there are quite a few more veggie burgers out in the universe that I haven't tried. And the reason why I say veggie burgers are your friends is because you can pop them in the toaster oven, garnish them with sprouts or lettuce, put them on a whole grain bun. That's a meal. So easy. Okay? The next thing that you're, that's your friend are sprouts. This picture on the top is our broccoli sprouts, the highest containing sulforaphane to, that I have learned about. Sulforaphane is the cancer-fighting ingredient. I grow sprouts in my kitchen on an ongoing basis. I promise you, it is so easy. It, and if, if you were to ask me, okay, what's the, what's the one food, Rosie, that you really, really want me to start eating, it would be sprouts. Oh, my God. There's, there, they're so, so easy to grow. They're loaded with vitamins and minerals and enzymes. Live, they're living food as opposed to dead food. Think about it. Put living food in your body, you have more life force. Put dead food in your body, your cells are being compromised. All right. Tortillas are your friends. Here's a picture. Here are two pictures of simple. How many of you can roll up a tortilla? Delicious. Some veggies, some veggies in your refrigerator. Nutritious. This is, these are all whole foods. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand on this one, but for those of you who want to move the needle and say, you know, I really, I really ought to be cooking at home more, this is for you. And this is one tiny fraction of eating out, having somebody else make your food ingredients decisions for you and spending a lot of money and maybe not ending up feeling so great. These are my opinions, by the way. Can you tell? All right. All right, here's the one ingredient pasta. It's explorecuisine.com. This, this will be in the slide deck that I'm sharing with you. One ingredient pasta, it's brilliant. And what this means is that your delivery system for marinara or uh, olive oil and garlic or lemon juice, your delivery system is nutrient dense as opposed to white grain, or sorry, white pasta, which is the nutrients have been lifted out. They're enriched back in, but it ain't like the original thing. And these are mung beans. Beans are so, so good for you. I have that on a list of foods I recommend. Mung beans, soybeans, azuki beans, so, so good for you. They're complete foods, and beans are a great source of protein. Okay. Fruits and veggies are your friends. So if you have them in your house and prepare them simply, I believe you will grow to love how beautiful they are to look at, how versatile, how inexpensive, and perhaps most importantly, my favorite thing, which you probably can guess by now, how you feel when you eat them. It's so funny, when I think about my 20s and my 30s when I was pretty insane around food, and I remember eating food not for nourishment or hunger, but feeding a whole different part of myself that no longer exists anywhere on the planet. And now I think about eating food now, and I'm somewhat of a sensualist when it comes to food. I eat slowly. I make yummy noises, which embarrasses my kids. Food is very sensuous. And if you connect eating with providing nourishment for your body in a healthy environment and you slow down and you take it, it takes like an hour to chew a Brussels sprout. And by the time you're done, you're like full, so you're not going to eat too much. 
food like this requires conscious mastication. And you're going to take your time and you're going to use your, what is the digestion actually starts in your brain when you begin thinking about food, but the next place digestion is, is in your mouth. Saliva breaks down your food. And when you use your teeth and your saliva to break these foods down, you're actually also stimulating gut health. And gut health, I was on a conference call this morning. I was doing an interview this morning with somebody from my podcast, and he was talking about how uh, various forms of stress are associated with disease, and we started talking about the gut, and a healthy gut is correlated with a reduction of Alzheimer's, reduction of heart disease, a reduction of cardiovascular disease, that's heart disease, a reduction of diabetes, uh, increased gut function, being able to extract nutrients from our food is associated with an increased sense of well-being because 85% of the serotonin in our body lives in the gut. These are feel-good neurotransmitters. And if we are poisoning our guts with food, like for example, there's no fiber in animal products. We need fiber to keep the lining of our intestines clean. We need food like this to go to the bathroom and have really good bathroom experiences. And all that is correlated with good health and feeling fabulous. And that's my, that's my hope for you that you will get the veggies. I have some recipes coming up in just a minute. Shakes, 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 shakes. Rosiebag.com slash shake is an article that I wrote called Have Your Shake and Eat It Too. Shakes are, I, who, who in here is in the Vitality Club? Fantastic. I think we're going to have a class on making smoothies. Because making smoothies is incredible. This particular brand of shake is the brand that I've been using. I'm a distributor for the company since 1999. And if you want to talk with me about that afterwards, pick up my card or put a check by your name when you sign in. I'll be happy to have a chat with you about it. There are all kinds of shake products on the market. They're not all created equally. This is a brand that I use, recommend, and prefer. But the idea with shakes is you're getting a meal in a glass, very easy to digest. It's whole food. The varieties are endless. You can throw in a handful of kale. You can throw in some sprouts, some nut butter. If you're going for a workout and need the calories, throw in a scoop of almond butter. Shakes rock. And they're very, very practical and good to have on hand. And the, it, like, like I said, the varieties of the ingredients are go on. There's no end to how much variety you can put in a shake. This morning I had a protein powder, chocolate flavor, with some organic coffee from Trader Joe's, and an, a sliced mango for breakfast. I had that about 8 o'clock. I, I wasn't hungry till about 1.30. Because this food will fill you up, and because there's no spike to your blood sugar, it's called extracting energy from your food. You are fuller longer. And that, by the way, is a really good sign that, you're, that that idea of extracting energy from your food and continuing going and you don't crash after two hours, that's an incredible good, that's an incredibly reliable sign of moving the needle toward better health. Okay, sweeteners. This is a tricky one. This is really true. When I was working with a fitness trainer one time, and I said to him, does sugar pass your lips? And he says, sugar passes everyone's lips. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know that it is sometimes an alligator to wrestle with. I would say one of the most common reasons why people want to work with me is to overcome a sugar habit. When I wrote my book, which I have, I have some here today, when I wrote my book, I consulted with... Dr. Susan Kleiner, a nutritionist from Seattle, and she maintains that sugar is not addictive, but highly, highly habit-forming. That, that difference, by the way, has to do with some brain chemistry. Others will tell you that sugar is highly addictive. It doesn't matter. It's what we know is it's easy to get hooked on it. And if you want to point, if you want to point yourself toward getting healthy and healthier and healthier and healthier, you will dial back processed sugar from your diet. I have a client in um, San Carlos, and he is, he's like wrestling sugar like it's an alligator with a big tail. He, it throws him down, and he throws it down, and he's now dialing it back. For some, it's not easy. 
But the point is, there are lots of foods that are very satisfying that are not empty calories. I think it's great that they made sweet potatoes low glycemic and a nutrient-dense food. Like, thank you, whoever did that. What a good deal that is. Isn't that cool? Dates are great for you. I have maple syrup and honey on here. The one takeaway for any process, maple syrup and honey are both processed. The one thing to know about that is they're, they're slightly better for you than sugar, but uh, these, the, the, processed, the processed sweeters have to be eaten in moderation. To that point, I want to suggest that if you bake, if you cook, and the recipe calls for a cup of sweetener, try three-fourths of a cup. Try a half a cup. You'll be surprised. We have been conditioned to find food excessively sweet as the standard. And I have found that having the sugar in most recipes or having the honey or having the maple syrup, it's still plenty sweet. Okay. Nuts, nut butters, and seeds. This is great. Okay. I have a concoction that I recommend, equal parts of chia, hemp, and ground flax. What do we put it on? Everything. Really good source of omega-3s, a really good source of healthy fats, protein, fiber, nutty, delicious, flavorful. Okay? And the idea, uh, this is that there are a lot of beans on here. What we talk about whole grain, multi-grain crackers and bread, not to be confused with eating a whole loaf of bread. However, in moderation, the thing, the thing about bread, tortillas, and crackers and whole grain bagels is they do contain nutrients, but they're a little higher in the spike your blood sugar department. So if you're going to have a, if you're going to have a piece of toast, one is better than four. And just because it's a health food, is not, there's no food that one should eat until one is too stuffed. And I recommend a heads up in eating the foods that, are, that have grains in them, like the whole grain bread, because they are higher glycemic. They do, they're not nutrient, they're not empty calories, but you want to be careful about the blood sugar. Okay, beans, mung beans, azuki beans, garbanzo beans. What do we put them in? Everything. Last night, oh, my sister taught me a new recipe. This, was, this one was so easy. We used uh, lentils. She sauteed lent, uh, onions and garlic, added some curry powder, thyme, and cumin, and then took a pack of the plain cooked, nothing added to it, lentils from Trader Joe's, sauteed it in a pan with spinach. It was fantastic, absolutely fantastic, and so easy. And the curry powder is easy to work with, cumin is easy to work with. That might be a new ingredient for you, but go try it. The wonderful thing about trying new ingredients is that you have new flavors. That's really wonderful. All right. Sugary desserts, I don't recommend it. When Mark and I go, I have a funny story to tell you about my husband. We were at a restaurant in Mountain View, and we shared a black lava cake. And I said to him, if we each have a half of a black lava cake, does that mean we lose weight? And he said, yes, so if we have two, we'll lose more weight. <laughs> well, you know the deal. There's, I, put a rest, I put a link up here for chocolate chia pudding completely nutrient dense, only ingredients that are going to make your cells sing, no ingredients to make you think that, oh, I shouldn't have had that. And like I said, this kind of food does not lend itself to overeating the way the sugary, buttery ice cream thing does because you're not knocking yourself out with excess sugar. Okay. These are reliable brands. I recommend these brands, but there are more than these. And we can actually, I don't know how we'll do this. I, in the Vitality Club, what we'll start doing is sharing brands that we recommend that we like to use. These are all whole grain. They are processed, but they are nutrient dense as opposed to empty calories. Gotcha. Okay. All right. We talked about adjusting your mindset. I want to introduce a concept to you called slow food. It's the opposite of fast food. And the slow food movement, what that is, is taking the time to nourish your body with food that requires chopping and preparation because you're worth it. You get one body this time around, and unlike your car, you can't trade it in.
And Dr. Grieger, whose book, How Not to Die, I'm a fan of his, he has a website called nutritionfacts.org. And he's, an, he's brilliant. We have, we, have a, we have a fondness, Heidi and I have a fondness for Dr. Grieger in common. And Dr. Grieger says, I know I'll die someday, but not from anything I inflicted upon myself. And that's a really good mindset. To think of slow food, it takes more time to prepare. But this shift in mindset I'm recommending is that you will buy back more time because if you think it's expensive to get sick, it is the biggest time suck in the world. My dad spent the last three years of his life trying to buy his health back after he lost it to a stroke. He had a completely lifestyle-induced, preventable cardiovascular disease. Oops, he forgot to take care of himself, and after he had a stroke, it was too late. That's part of my personal motivation. So, all right. I want to recommend that you make food choices based on nutrition. It can be done. Go to a restaurant and ask yourself, what is the heart-healthy food on the menu? What food, will help my, what food will help my cells sing? What food will, will help me feel fabulous? Move the needle. There are foods on that list that I said don't eat. I would be thrilled, and you can be happy if you just eat them way less. That would be really awesome. Okay? All right. So here's a very fun fact. If you have some ingredients, you don't know how to cook them, and you go on Google, if you put any ingredients into the Google search, you will find recipes using those ingredients. I have done it with wild combinations just to test it. So this one, I Googled just randomly broccoli lentil recipe because I was curious. I never saw this recipe before. I wanted to see what came up as a search for these two great ingredients. So here's a takeaway for you. If you want to start cooking new food, go to, the, go to your browser, type the ingredients in, and there's a recipe. And by the way, consumer alert. This is my serious voice. There are so many websites touting healthy food but just because they call it that, look at the ingredients, become sensitive to things like brown sugar and instant oats and uh, things like that that you want to become aware of. There are a lot of moms who have out there nutritious, wholesome recipes for the kids. I've looked at them, and there's nothing nutritious about them. So just be, be, be like I said, feed your brain and become more aware over time. All right, here are the five keys again. I think we covered it. We're doing great time-wise, Ms. Kyle. And what I want, this, this will be in your notes. What I want to do now is, bef I'm going to, oh, 